Hello and welcome to this video on five facts you may not know about administering the phonics screening check. The first fact is to do with administering the check and who's actually able to do that. So for the first few years of the check, um, it had to be a teacher and um, TAs and HLTAs were not allowed to, to administer the phonics screening check. This changed in 2017 and in 2017, the wording stated um, it can be a member of staff who is trained in phonics and known to the child. In 2018, this year, they have added a further clause, which um, now says that not only is it a member of staff who is trained in phonics and known to the child, um, it now needs to be a member of staff who has experience of delivering phonics sessions to pupils. Um, so there is a, a little bit of um, scope there for not just teachers now um, in the last two years, other members of staff who fit those other criteria are also able to administer the screening check now. So fact number two is to do with security. So the, um, the document states that teachers mustn't share the check words with anyone who is not directly involved with the administration of the check. And that includes other staff at the school, other schools, online forums, social media, including blogs and family members as well. So <clears throat> it's worth thinking about things like um, it, you obviously aren't going to be able to come out of your check and discuss words with other people that you might work with in your year group if they are not directly involved in administering the check themselves. So if your TA, for example, is not involved in administering the check, you won't be able to discuss any of the words on the check with them until the two week test period is over. Um, I was actually told a little anecdote a few years back about um, a school uh, who had sat down to do the screening check with um, the children and uh, one child had turned around and said, oh, I did this with mummy at home last night. And uh, the school were a little bit surprised and obviously had to, um, had to follow up on that because that is a potential breach of security. And it transpired that that child's mother um, actually worked as a member of staff in another school. So whilst the school who were actually administering the check um, obviously lost out, I, I, as I understand it, that child's score wasn't allowed to be counted, so they lost out. It was actually the security procedures in the child's mother's school that, that had lapsed and caused the problem. So it's just worth thinking about things like if you're administering the check and you're needing to take a break yourself at some point in the day, um, those papers can't be left lying around anywhere where another member of staff who's not involved in the check or a parent or anyone else might actually catch sight of them because that was what had happened in, in that particular school and it actually caused another school a, a, a problem. Um, a lot of people ask which graphemes are going to be used on the check. Uh, you may or may not be aware that all national curriculum tests have a framework document um, which is published to help the people that are creating the actual test papers. So the people who set the questions have to stick within the parameters of the framework document for that particular test. Um, and there is one for the um, phonic screening check. Uh, this is what the front cover looks like. I've put a link to it on my website. So if you go to uh, teaching resources and phonic screening check resources, um, you, you can download the assessment framework from there. And that lists all the graph beams which the test developers could choose to draw on when selecting their words on the phonics screening check. So that is your ultimate list. They, 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 they can't choose to use graph beams which aren't contained on that list. And obviously there are going to be <coughs> some differences between what's on that list and some of the phonics programs that are used in school. So there may be graph beams which we teach routinely, which aren't covered on the check. Um, and equally, there may be some graphemes which appear on the check, which actually are not covered routinely by uh, some phonics programmes in school. So it's really, really important that you look at the framework document itself um, to see which uh, graphemes could occur. 
Um, fact number four is to do with the types of words that they use on the screening check. And again, a lot of that information is contained in the framework document, but a couple of interesting facts for you that you, that you may or may not know. Um, the polysyllabic words which occur on the last page of the check will only be real words, they won't be alien words, and they will not be compound words. Um, another fact for you, the real words on the check, 40 to 60% of the real words that are on the check will be less common words that the children are unlikely to have read before. And that kind of explains why words like scram have appeared on the test in the past, uh, which actually a lot of children chose to read as scream instead of scram, but 40 to 60% of those real words are going to be words that, that uh, children are unlikely to have read before. So that, that, that accounts for the, some of the, the uh, less, less uh, common, common words that we see occurring. Uh, fact number five, uh, is to do with um, acceptable pronunciations of graphemes in alien words. So the, the, the booklet uh, actually says the, the scoring guidance gives some alternative pronunciations. However, the list of alternative pronunciations is not exhaustive. Um, so that therefore means that, that there, is, there is scope if a child uses an alternative grapheme, uh, which may be deemed acceptable. Um, it's a little bit of a grey area. So actually, if you look at the framework document, these graphemes here, the single vowel letters, can be tested within words such as she, where this one is making an E sound rather than E, can be tested in words like mind, where it's making an I um, instead of an E, in words like cold, where the O is making O instead of O, and it can also be tested in words like unit, where the letter U is making U instead of A. So that is uh, deemed within the framework document to be words that could well occur. Now, obviously, those are real words. In an alien word, a child isn't going to know whether that's making an E or an E sound. So one would expect that maybe those are allowable graphemes. However, on the training video, this word occurs and the child on the training video sounds it out as spoke, spoke, and it is marked as incorrect, but with no um, guidance given as, as to why. I have raised this issue on numerous occasions with STA um, and have yet to get a response uh, that actually explains the rationale behind that. Um, unfortunately, they have now refused to um, discuss this issue with me any further, so I can't get any further clarity on that. So there are five facts for you um, to do with administering the check. And if you want answers to other frequently asked questions, I have a whole section on my website which says um, frequently asked questions under phonics screening check. And there are lots of questions there that I hear people asking um, to do with the administration. So that might be worth a little look.